All right, Nick. Uh, not synced up. But we come into this show with one out. Just going to let everybody know. We got one away. One away. Let the outfielders know. And uh, that's where I'm at. I know you might be on out number two, but I got six seconds left in the pitch. That's a really nice swing. A really nice swing right there. Christian Yelich. Uh, I have 0-2, Nick. 13 on the, on the clock. Ten, I'm at 10. All right. We're close enough. All right. I pause it for a second. All right. Uh, chat, as always, thank you for your likes. I see you. Some of you are already rallying for likes. I like that. That's very, very good. As you can tell, I'm a little out of breath. I was running around. I think they're out the show, though. I'm going to still try to... Still try to get something. Yeah, I won't ruin it. What a game. <laughs> this is a wild game. What a wild game. I mean, what do you want to talk about tonight? Do you mean Christmas? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Whew. All right, Alexis. Strike, just, big dog. Just, just find a way. Yep. All right, chat ruined it for me. Damn it. I'm, I, I can't look again. I, uh, I can't look again. Chat is always ahead, man. Always ahead. I think we have some friends that, that go on game day just so they can. I agree. I 100% I, I, agree. I, I, there might be some that have incredible service or no. or whatnot, but I think we have some that just legitimately want to want to torture us or, or just want to be first. I think they're listening to the radio. That's 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 how that's how confident that, that, and desperate they are. That that's possible too. Radio would be, although the radio on the um, the app is actually typically behind the the TV for me. We'll take we'll take a double play here, right? Yeah, I'll take a shift double play. I'd love to even up the score. Oh, what what was the point? I don't understand. <laughs> oh. What? Yeah, I don't know why. Why would you not throw there? Because, I mean, what's the like that runs uh, meaningless, right? Yeah, and it's like right. there's the double play ball, kind of. No, I mean, I know you can't play devils at like like. It's easy for me to sit here and say, "Look, C, C, C," but I'm just. I mean, what? What's the? It's almost like they weren't holding them on at first or something. I didn't. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Which I understand why they don't. Maybe they're worried about a double. You know he uh, wants to come through. Yeah. What a terrible decision by him. Yeah, I know. What is he thinking, dude? Like, just I mean, keep the ball in of front of you. All the players to right. not keep the ball in front of you on. Yeah, I, I really wasn't even going to say that because I felt like that was gonna, that was going to like take away from Ellie. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really want it to be like be that guy, but like, what are you what are you diving for there? You know, Ellie deserves something. That hit he him. Gotta... What? No, I want to see that again. Jesus, did that hit him? It did hit him. I was going to say, though, Ellie deserves like some of those home run, like that cheap home run, because like he doesn't get credit when he gets like that, that yeah. uh, when he gets on by an air. Yeah, I think that, that's 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 been the argument all along about the air thing. It's like I, don't, I wouldn't mind if they just scrapped airs to, all in all. Like or they made if you reach on an air, you get on base. I feel like it just you sure. get on. You're yeah, getting on it, it counts towards your on base percentage. Yeah. 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 That seems appropriate to me. And it seems like if you always have errors against you, then then you're obviously maybe a reason as to why there's errors. Like, yeah. Uh, otherwise, other players, it would all kind of average out, I guess, in a yeah. way. Well, and especially too, because like they're giving people hits on, uh, like balls that are in the sun. Right. Like, it's yeah. Not, it's not. It's not like it's always a perfect no. science, anyways. You Correct. Know? This kid, man, he's gonna. He's 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 gonna he's gonna make oh. me. Alexis, come on, brother. He's gonna make me come really want to burn myself here in a minute. I, oh, I don't know what's Lord. going on. I tell you what. Oh man, this is this is. I tell you what. I thought I got these glasses today for the solar eclipse. I think instead I'm just gonna. This is how I'm gonna watch Diaz for the rest of the season. <laughs> you guys, let me know what happens with this kid. But I will tell you what, I can't handle it anymore. 
If only they make those glasses, but you could only see when he throws a strike. Yeah. Well, I can tell you right now. You can't see anything in these things. It's impressive. <laughs> it's... Just let me know what happens. I don't want to watch either. Just let me know what happens. Why do I have to be the one? I don't know. Um, did he walk that guy? It's 3-2. Three, 3-2? Two. Three, two? Oh, he swung a ball four. Almost hit him. Is that a strikeout or no? No. So it was a foul ball? Yes, foul ball. Man, I'm going to need some better play-by-play was... play out of you. Oh, sorry. It was literally running in, about to hit him. Oh, he swung and at he it? He swung at it and fouled it back. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Diaz stares in. Here's the 3-2 the pitch. Good. Swing and a fly ball. Fairchild under. Makes the catch. Reds win. Reds win. Nice. Reds win. Nice. These are the Diaz glasses. These are the Diaz glasses until until proven otherwise. Until proven otherwise, I will be wearing these babies anytime Mr. Alexis gets on the mound. That's no disrespect to the man. No disrespect. I love him. I love him. But we can't be doing this every night. We can't be doing this every night. We're not walking guys, hitting guys, loading the bases. Woo! I'll Crazy. tell you what. It's a win against the Brewers. It's a win against the Brewers. You don't ask how. You found a way. That's right. You win. You beat Milwaukee. My gosh. Go. Just when I thought this was going to be an easy one. Turns out it wasn't. But you know what time it is, folks. You know what time it is. It's time to do a show. Cincinnati Reds win the World Series in four straight. It was a sweep. In the dirt, it's a wild pitch. You can't watch it. Look, it's won the game. That ball is fair. Cincinnati's ahead. Two games to none. Welcome, Joe Randa, to Cincinnati. Adam Dunn has done it again. Benzinger backing and calling. And the 1990 World Championship belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. Marty, yes, this is Adam from Milwaukee. Hey, Adam, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. Do you think Scott Hedenberg is a good player? Done up there with the bases loaded, the outfield deep and around toward right, and the 1-0 on the way to the plate. Swung on, long drive, right field, and this one belongs to the rim. And a high drive, hit back into deep right field. Junior has just knocked the door down to the 500 club. De La Cruz is, oh my goodness, look at this kid run. My, oh my, that is a triple. Matt McClain's first big league bomb. Spencer Steer's first big league hit is a home run to straightaway center field. Joey Votto's done it again. The pitch, Votto swings high in the air. And I can't tell you how much it means to play in front of everyone here in Cincinnati as a Red. Uh, what a gift. What a tremendous gift. So thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you.
Bailey. A round ball to third. Frazier gloves. Throw to first and Homer Bailey for the second time in his major league career. All right, Nick, uh, winning edition, a uh, big time winning edition of Chatterbox Reds, always the better kind. And you know what? It just seemed like tonight I was a little worried at times because the Brewers were in town and they just seemed to find a way. I don't know how it is. You know, the Brewers, and I haven't been paying as much attention to them this year, Nick, but the Brewers might have scored eight runs the last two weeks. And next thing you know, you find them scoring eight runs in one game against the uh, Cincinnati Reds, but it doesn't matter. It all doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they found a way to win. Which means one step closer. Nick, you feeling all right now? I'm feeling great. Hey, look, uh, I think the Reds went three and ten against the Brewers last year. Uh, you hate when you have an eight nothing lead that the game gets dicey. But hey, give a lot of credit to Sims, Cruz, and even a little bit to Diaz for uh, getting it getting it done uh, in the uh, the later innings. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, some folks are saying he's back. Some folks are saying he never left. I don't know where you might fall, but hey, look, it's a Reds win against the Milwaukee Brewers. We uh, we move along. Uh, I got something about that here in a, here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for that. Um, a couple of super chats here before we get to the Bosco recap. Sir Boy Wonder coming in right off the rip with by the hype, big time super chat from Sir Boy. Michael Rolfs back in the chat. He's saying super chat for some of the names in here. Could get a lineup of superheroes with Sir Boy Wonder and crew. Could be. Zach Strayer. Ugly, but pretty at times. Love you guys. Thank you, Zach. We appreciate you. And you know what? It, that is true. That is very much true in this show. It doesn't really matter, does it? You win the game, you win the game, you win the game. And again, if you lose the game, it doesn't matter how well you played. You lost. All right. And then Sir Boy Wonder, he's just on fire. I don't know if he's... I, th I think he's down at Great American Ballpark. He's living his best life. He said, Ellie Haters... F yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. If you are an Ellie uh, uh, stan, if you're an Ellie type of guy, and you've had to listen to this Braidman for the last week and a half, two weeks, fair or unfair, uh, most of it, let's be honest, a little unfair. A little unfair. Um, tonight's your night. This is the night to do it, Nick. If, you, if you're going to go out on a limb and be that guy, Tonight's the night. I don't know if you're going to take humble pie or not. We'll find out here in, here in just a moment. But you know why? Because Ellie De La Cruz is on the rundown. Uh, and Drew Garrison comes in. Reds undefeated the day after I super chat in 2024. Thank you, Drew. You're the man, as always. Um, Nick, anything to add here uh, before we get into the box score recap? It was a hell of a night. It was a hell of a night. And... Um, I'm just thankful that the Reds held on because it would have been it would have been just as exciting and, and as happy as I am now. I would have been the opposite if they didn't find a way to win this game. Yeah, I won't. I won't lie. When it when it got down to a one run game, I was like, oh man, I do I do not want to do a show if this happens. And there's nothing worse than, than having to try to 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 salvage that up because you, there's nothing you could say that's right. But hey, the Reds won, and, and there's now nothing I could say that's wrong. So that's kind of how these shows go. And so it's a great night from now on. That it is. It's a, it's a very, very good night. Uh, I will also know uh, there is a national championship tonight uh, that we will probably, many will want to watch, but we'll do our best to keep this show precise, clean as possible. But the truth is it'll probably go off the rails at some point. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but before we get off the rails, I'm already thinking about going there. Uh, all in Christ. All in Christ. Thank you for the super chat. Dang, Ellie. Look, we're looking all right considering all the injuries. CES will get it going then it's on. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. I hope. I hope. We need CES, man. We need CES. We need to get it going. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it later. Let's do it. Box score recap. Let it rip, Nick. All right. Well, the Reds took an 8 nothing lead as they beat up on Aaron Ashby in his first start since 2022. And they also capitalized on some poor Milwaukee defense, something we certainly did not see a lot of last year. 
Ellie De La Cruz's speed created two runs just early in this game. Steer had a two RBI double, and Will Benson hit his first career home run against a lefty. Graham Ashcraft had only allowed one base runner through the first four innings, but he gave up three runs in the fifth to make it eight to three. Ellie De La Cruz got a run back when he hit a 450 foot moonshot to make it nine three, but Ashcraft gave up three more runs and didn't make it out of the sixth. He left with a score 9-6. to six. Could have been worse if Stuart Fairchild didn't rob Willie Adamas of a home run. Justin Wilson gave up his first runs of the season when he gave up a two-run home run to Christian Yelich in the seventh. And just like that, the Reds' lead was down to 9-8. to eight. Lucas Sims, he came in and stabilized the game. He struck out three batters and got the Reds out of the seventh with the lead. And then Ellie De La Cruz just capped off an incredible night with an inside-the-park home run in the bottom of the seventh, making it 10-8 Reds. Fernando Cruz was electric in the eighth inning. The best, uh, maybe the best from, performance from Cruz this year, at least maybe the, the best in a uh, big spot for him. And then Alexis Diaz was a little dicey, not going to lie in the ninth, but Alexis Diaz got it done. Reds win 10-8. You don't ask him how, you find a way to beat the Milwaukee Brewers, something the Reds have uh, really struggled with of late. All right, it's the deep drive of the day, sponsored by DSC. Who in the world would Nick put on here other than Ellie De La Cruz, and rightfully so. Ellie, he homered first one of the year on a fly ball to center field. It's kind of funny they call these things fly balls. I'd call it a piss missile, personally. Exit velocity, 112.3 if you're keeping track at home. That's a launch angle of 28 degrees. And if you do the math real fast and you know those Sabre metrics, it's 450 feet and uh, the win probability at that time for Cincinnati jumped to 98%. Certainly didn't feel like that in the ninth inning. But the deep drive of the day is sponsored by DSC, and they are a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production, specializing in used cooking oil collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Thank you to our friends at Deep South commodities uh, a couple more quick super chats here nick before we get into the show the super chats i'm gonna tell you guys we're gonna have to start segmenting these out i love them you guys are the best but we get sidetracked on these things it's hard to keep up but by god you don't need pfizer you need a martini i love the name fantastic name welcome to nut cutter nation matt wells chimes in he says sims cruz diaz the 2024 answer to last year's brewers woes because we can at least match their back end talent there's some truth to that i like that i like there's that. some truth to that thank you matt uh big see you later changed it that used to be the viking helmet guy for those that are keeping track at home uh pro tip don't give up on ellie it's pretty good it's pretty good just thought uh, Trace, I, I, I ran out of time. I was going to make the deep drive of the game. I was going to have a two slides and throw you one up first. It was Bubba Thompson's double. But I ran out of time. I thought that would have been a great bit. I would have, that would have, that was going to be a good bit. I, I ran out of time though. And yeah, couldn't get it done. That's okay. shame on me. Sometimes, sometimes things happen and that's a okay. All right, let's get into it. Uh, you want to start, you want to start right off the rip of the show. You want to start right at the rip of the show. Uh, here we go. Ellie De La Cruz. The floor is yours, Nick. Go ahead. I think he's going to be okay, folks. I think he's going to be okay. This is the kind of game where everyone can take a deep breath. And when you see the next time he strikes out three times in a game, you can say, look, this is what he's capable of. Uh, this is what he can win a game on his own. Ellie De La Cruz won the game for the Reds today. His fingerprints were all over the game from the first inning till the till the ninth inning. Uh, this is this is the the player. This is our hope, and there's going to be growing pains. But man, it just felt good to have one of those nights where everyone can go. All right, yeah, that that's Ellie De La Cruz. That's our guy. And uh, man, tonight just it, it, even not just the the home run and the inside the park home run. Maybe just as impressive was when he reached on the air that he completely forced the air on the defense, uh, ran around the bases, scored a run from first on a bunt. Uh, it's just, there's so many different ways that he can beat you. And when when he's on, there's no player like him in this sport. You, you know, I, um, I decided to uh, purchase something, and it was really for the idea, perhaps, of having a prop every now and again. Maybe if I have to dunk a basketball, 
and then I remembered I had it. And I, I and people probably think that I'm sunburnt right now. They think that, oh, man, Trace, you need to put sunscreen on. What I've actually been doing over the last five minutes is um, is doing this. This thing just got out of the package. I, I don't know if you can see it or not, but what I'd like to ask here to my good friend is, uh, this is Fred from Facebook. Fred from Facebook said that Ellie De La Cruz should have been in AAA last week. Anything to say? Yeah, well, uh, it turns out Ellie's good again. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, Ellie De La Cruz, he, he's, he has the ability to do what he did tonight all the time. And that's what I've been saying. Like, it, for the Reds to be as good as we ultimately want them to be, then, then that is the Ellie that we need more times than not. I'm just saying. That's the truth. That is the, that is the cold, hard truth. My question is, if you were to get rid of Ellie, what's left? Like, oh, I, Espinal, by the way, shout out to him. I'm not going to slander his name tonight. I did last night, but not tonight. I won't do it. He had, he had, a, he had a solid game. Um, it didn't show up in the box score, maybe, but he did have a solid game. And uh, I just want to say, if that's the backup plan to Ellie De La Cruz, I'm not interested. Just saying. I'm not sure where to go from there. You have a problem no with idea. Fred? Did you have a problem no with Fred? That was coming, folks. It's always an adventure here on a, a Chatterbox Friends. <laughs> where did, did you have a problem with I, Fred? Huh? I, I did not have a problem. Fred also like, doesn't. Fred also doesn't really like Stuart Fairchild. He said he's not good at baseball. It, yeah. it was a it, look. It was a look. I I, I don't want to go too far, but it was a tough night for the Ellie and Stu haters, uh, which seemed to be like the same person. Um, so look, it was a tough night and. Uh, I'll feel for you. Hopefully, uh, you can get him back tomorrow. We shall find out. All right. Uh, let's get into uh, some other uh, d to areas of discussion. <sighs> you put in the rundown here. I'm just going to read it. Bell leaves in Ashcraft. Uh, I'm going to say something, and this isn't slanderous. I'm just saying what I think is relatively true. Defense matters. We all agree with that, right? Defense kind of bit us a little bit in that seventh inning. Um, just going to say it. I I'm not... I love I love Spencer Steer. I think he's doing an admirable job out there. I think he's he's been as good as you could ever hope him to be. But if we're being honest, a traditional outfielder probably catches that ball and two runs don't score and the wheels don't kind of fall off and the, the you know what you probably don't even think twice about Ashcraft being in or not being in. I'm not trying to defend Ashcraft significantly, but he had a really weak hit that he tried to make a play on. He threw the ball away. I thought he threw the ball unbelievably well. I know that the box score might not look like that, but I thought he threw the ball really, really well, and he was on the uh, the short end of the stick, uh, both defensively and maybe what we'll call a swinging bunt that, that then turned into an air by him. He compounded a mistake. But I guess your thoughts on just the situation with Ashcraft. Yeah, I put that in because, you know, my mentions were as soon as Ashcraft gave up runs, what is David Bell doing, blah, blah, blah. And I get it. Look, I he didn't look great. And Wait a minute. Time out. I, I, I know we're supposed to do a formal show here, but you have people chiming. What is he supposed to do? He can never win. He can never win. The guy can never win. You just, I mean, if, if he would have taken him out and the bullpen blew it, it's like, oh, there goes Captain Hook again, pulling guys in the sixth, seventh inning, or whatever it is. Like, David Bell literally can't win with some of these people. It's Fred. Fred from Facebook. Those bastards suck, man. They're the worst, by the way. You should stop interacting with them. They're called drains in life, Nick. They're drains. Hang out with some more fountains. You know what I'm saying? By the way, best advice I can give on this show before you get going here is that you just need to be a fountain in life. You know, don't be a drain. If, you, if you're a drain, figure it out and be a fountain. Go ahead, Nick. Proceed. I was just going to say, look, this is game four of 14 days in a row of a game that the Reds play, and... Uh, you have to try to get extra outs from your, your starting pitchers. Um, we saw last year in September what happens when you overuse your bullpen. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it completely backfired on David Bell if you if you want to go that route because he ended up having to use all of his good relievers tonight. But, I mean, you have to trust Graham Ashcraft with a 9-6 lead, I think it was at the time. You have to trust him to be able to get a couple more outs in that spot, in, in my opinion. Um, if he can't, you probably don't have any business being in the big leagues. Am I right? And I'm not saying Graham Ashcraft shouldn't be in the big leagues because he does, but 
this is a learning experience for Graham Ashcraft. This is an experience where, you know, hey, next time, all right, hey, I got to be a little more aggressive. I, th- I thought he maybe wasn't as aggressive in that sixth um, as he was earlier in the game. Uh, it felt like he was really finding the corners, and, and it kind of felt like he was just, you know, more – uh, just trying to get through that inning, he still have to he still have to pitch even with a with a big lead, and I think it's a learning experience for him. But you do have to protect the bullpen. And I've said it a million times. I think that managing a bullpen is incredibly difficult. It's something that we fans don't realize how difficult it is to do on a night in night in basis um, with, with with pitchers that aren't available on certain nights that we never know about. Um, I used to be a lot more critical of of bullpen management, but over the years, and, and the more people you talk to, the uh, the more information you get. Just it's a brutal job trying to manage a bullpen. So I didn't have an issue with it. I, I get why it, it it stinks when Ashcraft looks looks pretty rough and then gives up some runs, and you get back in the game, and then you have to use all your good relievers anyways. But I think overall, you have to try to get the extra outs in those type of spots, even if it's against the Brewers. Okay, I I I'm looking back here, um, because I, I Scott in the chat. I'm trying to be fair. Okay, Scott's Scott's saying I'm being disingenuous, which I usually I'm not trying to be disingenuous. Maybe I just missed it. And to be fair, that was possible. I was running around doing some things, watching the game. But at the same time, um, I need to go back. I'm I'm gonna see how many times he got a hard hit ball. Because again, as I said before, Spencer Steer doesn't overrun that ball and he catches it in left field. Nobody's talking about it. So. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to do my best as we go through the show to go back through here and just look at. I'm, I'm there just... was a, there was. I mean, in, to, to like Scott's point in the fifth inning, there was one, two, three balls hit over 103.9 miles an hour off Ashcraft. There's, so he was a... he was giving up some really hard contact in the fifth. So like like I think to like people like Scott's point. You know, Ashcraft looked like, all right, he might be running out of gas, but you still have a six-run lead. Yeah, okay, it's a six-run lead. Like, oh, well, you can't pull guys with six-run leads, dude. We have to, oh, a full year. You got to save your bullpen at some point. Like, we can't, we can't complain on both sides of this thing. Is what I'm, is why I'm getting upset. Like, at the end of the year, we're gonna be like, oh, well, we got a guy in, we got a guy that's throwing the ball relatively. Like, you can say he's getting shelled all over the place. I mean, yeah, he had some hard-hit balls off of him, but he has a six-run lead. He, like, let him try to eat out, eat up some more innings. And yeah, you could argue that it ultimately backfired, certainly. But if he'd have gone out the next inning, and again, I'm just looking at the uh, the following inning, he goes fly out, softly hit single, softly hit single, and then the double by Bryce Terang that had a 160 expected batting average. So what are we talking about? If he'd had a, I'm I'm not trying to kill Steer, but if he had a competent left fielder, he doesn't even give up a run in the sixth inning. I move on. We we won tonight, by the way, ten to eight. I want to let everybody know that. I'm just, I'm just, I don't. It's just like every night, man. I look in there and David Bell did something wrong. I'm so tired of it. And it's nothing against Scott, by the way. That's not against Scott. I'm just saying, I just don't know if the the guy never wins. Yeah, there'll be there'll be times to to I think. Crush David Bell. I, I don't. Oh think yeah, definitely. Uh, it's called a <laughs> Sunday know. in Oakland. <laughs> hey, we're 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 April 9th. I haven't got I haven't got there yet. So yeah, thank <laughs> God. Still alive. But right. no, I, I again, I I do like get what Scott's point is. There was that fifth inning. There was some really really hard contact. And look, if this is a a game in September, maybe you say, hey, we can't get cute. This is a game against Brewers. But this is April. I mean, you you got to be careful with your bullpen. Um, especially, look, you just lost TJ Antone. The Reds are going to be doing a six-man rotation, uh, so they're going to have one less reliever, too, going forward. So I just think you have to pick your spots, and I, I, that's just kind of where I'm at on that. Yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, bullpen. Sims, Cruz, Diaz, Cruz. Boy, I tell you what, if, if, if and we've said that's how many times, but if Cruz has that splitter going, he, he's nasty, nasty. And how important was that inning from Sims? I mean, it felt like the wheels were falling off, right. and for him to get three strikeouts, stabilize the game, that was one of the bigger innings. I'll say that Lucas Sims' pitch may be in a Reds uniform. I don't think that's really hyperbole. That was a huge spot. Uh, the game could have got away from the Reds, and 
this is a game you 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 really, man you can't lose this game man that would just been brutal after the season you had last year against this Milwaukee team so that was a huge inning from Sims huge inning from Cruz Diaz I mean I guess huge inning from him Diaz is just Diaz I, I don't know what you really say about him at this point um overall he's doing fine and we'll keep taking it I I, I do worry it's gonna catch up at some point but somehow it hasn't yet so I'm just gonna keep crossing my fingers and hoping it doesn't you know the beautiful thing is is and i know you made a joke or reference about it on on x and 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 i know you're just having fun but um the beautiful thing is they won this game in the fashion they did and they still were very they were terrible with runners and scoring position in regards to getting hits three three for 12 three for 12 the uh the analytical freaks um you know Sometimes say that runners in square positions a little overrated. You know, I, I don't, I don't know. think. Can, can we? Can we? Can, let, let's talk through this. I think you're right. I don't think that there's like a way for you to be like, oh, a better hitter with runners in scoring position. I, then maybe you could say there's a clutch gene or not. I think it, it, it's 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 hugely meaningful in the game itself. But I don't know how you get better at it. If that makes sense, I don't think there's a way to get better at it. It's just one of those things where it's like, that's the only reason that the that the Brewers were even in this game. I did, what were the Brewers with runners in scoring position? I five bet they were, they were five for ten. So I mean, that's I'm not, and that's my point. It felt like the Reds just completely outplayed them, and but the game got kind of closer than it should have, and that's a big part of the reason why. And I'm not suggesting that you you have to get better at it. I don't know if you can get better at it. It's just one of those things where over the full season, though, is what I'm getting at is that it will average out. I do believe that it will average out. So the good news is is they won a game where, you know. I guess, quite frankly, they didn't hit all that well with runners in scoring position. And 3 for 12 is not horrible. Um, But Fairchild, uh, what a game by him. We'll get to him in probably just a minute. If he's not on the second second J-bar, I'm going to tell you right now, Nick, fix it. You just do what you got to do. The only thing I was going to add before we get to that is Fairchild had a chance to make it a four-run lead um, and get a hit there with two outs, but unfortunately he wasn't able to. And those are the things that ultimately, unfortunately, might – bite you in the rear end if, if it didn't go the way we'd all hope. So, Yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 I joke about it a little bit. I do think that, you know, your average with running his forward position is one of the most overrated stats out there. Um, I, I think, especially with a young team, you got to worry about getting on base. you got to worry about getting runners in scoring position before you worry about how often you're cashing in. Uh, but it, it just can it, – it's all about opportunities and, and how many you get. And uh, overall, I mean, the Reds, you know, one thing that was talked about a lot over the weekend was how many strikeouts the Reds have. And uh, the, the the one thing that I don't think was talked about was how many times the Reds walked in that series against the Mets. And this is a very young team. The Reds are walking a lot. And, and that's, a, that's a good development, especially with the Reds with some of their speed. Uh, I think that's a good thing. And Alex, I'll, I'll pull up the J-bar number two. It's on there. It's on there. It's coming, my brother. It's coming, my man. It's coming. We'll talk about Will. We'll talk about Will. Uh, well, let's get to it here in just a moment. But before we get to it, as always, uh, we have to talk about game time here. Uh, and, and it's a relatively simple thing, okay? For those that don't know, Game Time is a sponsor of us, and we very much appreciate them. They are a ticketing service. You can download the Game Time app and use code CINCY. That's C I N C Y. You can get $20 off your first purchase. And uh, personally, I've used the Game Time app numerous times. You've heard me say before two clicks. You can check out, click all in pricing. You don't have to worry about the back end fees on the on the back end of it, and uh, get yourself all excited because you think you got a deal, and then you realize you don't. That's that's kind of a a, a bummer, as they might say. But use code Cincy C I N C Y. Get twenty dollars off your first purchase. And uh, thank you to our friends at the Game Time uh, app for giving us a chance. We appreciate that. All right, uh, Benson, lefty on lefty. Listen, uh, I'm going to defend. I'm not. I, I, how do I do this? I'm going to defend you a little bit. Like at some point, we got to be fair on the lefties that Will Benson's facing. And I'm not trying to downplay Will Benson and what he did tonight by any stretch of the imagination. But they were facing some guy named Ashby. I said it earlier. You could replace the the H with an S and just get rid of the by. And I think that's what you ultimately wind up with. But you know, it is what it is. He 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 played really really well. Taking nothing away from him. Am I already hook line and sinker on thinking that he's going to start mashing lefties? No. But it's a nice sign, if anything. How about that? Well, the most important thing is the Reds don't really have a better option right now. 
than, than Will Benson play against lefties. If they had a better option, it's a different conversation. I'm not going to sit here and, and beg for uh, Bubba Thompson to play over over Will Benson against a left-handed pitcher. Um, I think you can make a case that Bubba Thompson should play because he's probably a better defender, but I'm not going to sit here and, and make a case about it because it's stupid. It's pointless. So good for good for Will Benson. I mean, he's, he's uh, you know, tonight, took took chance of his opportunity and if he continues to do it i hope he proves me wrong I hope he proves um i think the reds wrong because i don't really don't think the reds believe in in his ability to hit left-handed pitchers either but they're just kind of in the, that spot right now um first uh 53 at bats against lefties he had two extra base hits tonight he had two extra base hits so he doubled his career total tonight so good for him i hope he continues to do it uh but again i'm just going to look at the numbers until the numbers tell me something different yeah, I think it's more than fair, but it's nice to see Benson. Uh, baseball's kind of got a, a weird way of, of of just being a thing, and he got a day off, got a chance to take a little bit of a breather. I know he got a nap bat the other night, but he, he didn't start, and uh, he was, what, two for his last, I think, 19 when he, when he kind of got uh, the day off, per se. Comes back, his first at bat since uh, since getting the day off outside of, obviously, the, the at bat he got in the game. He smashes a home run. Uh, so shout out to shout out to Will Benson. He's continued to be a solid player, and we need him to do that moving forward. Because right now, it just feels like the depth on this team, oddly enough, of all things, is very very thin right now. So, you know, I, he's getting opportunities he wouldn't have he wouldn't have otherwise gotten. Like you said before, um, I think it's safe to say if TJ Friedel's healthy, he doesn't get these chances. So yeah, and it is what it is. But hey, right now he's got to continue to take it, and I need to put the score on here. Slash. You you do that because uh, the Reds did win ten to eight. All right, uh, let's do it, Stuart Fairchild. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what else to say about it. I, I I think at this point, is there a chance he does something like the the fly ball in Chicago? And the next thing you know, everybody's already you know. And I say everybody. I think we need to be careful from time to time too. I I. I it's almost like the the what is it the the vocal minority is like kind of what you see all the time on social media when that's not really the truth. I think if you watch this club day in day out, you know a little bit of ball. Maybe you're not as overreactive. I think I think you'll come around to be like, you know what, this guy's very serviceable, very serviceable. He hits left-handed pitching very very well. Plays a pretty good outfield. I know the play he made tonight was fantastic, but ultimately he does play a good outfield and he's fast. He's got he's got he's got speed on the bases, and you add all that together, it's a pretty damn good player. Especially when you especially when you don't really rely or you don't really ask much of him. Uh, and the last thing I'll say is that you know everyone thought maybe the spring was a little fluky, like oh yeah that's due it's a spring training thing. He's kind of carried it over a little bit, and and you know what he doesn't really get consistent opportunities, which is damn hard. That's damn hard to do. I've always found the kids that come off the bench in college or or maybe even the pros that, that are sharp shooting three-point shooters and they got like a 40% plus three-point shooting percentage, that's unbelievably impressive to just be able to come off the bench and drop drain threes. That's kind of what Stu does. He doesn't get consistent opportunities, but when he comes in, he's pretty damn good. Yeah, he's not trying to do too much offensively too, which is, I think I've talked about that before, but right now he's got a 409 on, on base percentage, walked twice tonight. Uh, he seems to be really just kind of taking, you know, what he's given. And I think that's that's what you want out of him. I'm more just excited to see him make a good defensive play because I know I believe this guy is a good defender. And but he, he, when you see small samples of these guys, like even Santiago West, but all thinks he's a terrible defender. I'm like, yeah, he, he's not a bad defender. He just had a couple bad games. But when that's all you see over a couple of games, I get why people, you know, kind of jump to those conclusions. So I was just, I was really happy to see him make a good defensive play because I think that's maybe a bigger strength of him really than his offense. But it hasn't really shown up as much because people just remember the the one or two bad plays and when he when he's been in a a, a particular spot. So that was just really, really cool to see for me just to – uh, you know, see people, people see what he's really capable of. Correct. I, I completely agree. I think he's one of those guys where I always give outs above average a hard time a little bit. Um, but I do think he's one of those players where y- you rely on those types of metrics, those types of statistics, those type of saber metrics, if you will, on, on trying to get the full potential out of what Stewart brings, because I think he does get good jumps on balls. And I think he does have enough speed where he's going to get to some balls that other guys don't get to. And you take it for granted when he gets underneath the baseball that other guys might struggle to get to. 
And uh, I guess Bubba Thompson, kind of one of the same in that regard, a little bit as well. Uh, we'll hopefully the fan base will kind of come around and figure out uh, to a certain extent how valuable those guys are. Should they be everyday players? No. Are good teams going to have Bubba Thompson start in center field more times than not? No. But for what we're asking them to do, they're more than serviceable. All right, Jonathan India. This is this. I, I you can only make this stuff up with the Reds, man. I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be like a, a super pessimistic guy tonight. The Reds win ten to eight. I'm going to be a, a you know. I, I like to stay upbeat. I'm feeling good. But like I seen that before the game, and I'm just like, I watched it like five times to try to figure out. And I love Nick Martini. He's provided. How the hell did Nick Martini even hit the ball over there? Like you know how hard you have to roll over a ball to hit it that far to the right, and then. I, of course, it's the internet, so you never know what you're going to get. Then people are complaining because he's standing there. It's like, dude, he's standing in a spot that just like, you might as well complain about guys standing in the on-deck circle during the game and they get hit in the game. You know? Like, why are they standing in the on-deck circle? That's a dangerous spot. I don't know, man. The chances of getting hit are just absurdly small. Last year, Noel V. Marte gets hit in the face playing toss. This year, India gets hit taking batting practice. I'm hopeful that it's precautionary. Has there been anything that has come out that you've seen yet on Jonathan India? Well, the the interesting thing that that Sadak said during the broadcast is he wasn't kept out because of getting uh, hit. He was kept out because of swelling in his hand from getting hit by the pitch yesterday. Okay. So it was actually because of yesterday. It wasn't because of today. Um, it just was one of those things like, geez, <laughs> poor guy. It's a, it's a rough couple nights. So oh, hopefully it was just, you know, a little bit of swelling um, and, and it'll be back in line tomorrow because yeah, right. the Reds really, really need Jonathan India right now. He's been outstanding. He's been getting on base at the top of the lineup and uh, you just cannot afford to have him out right now. All right. All right. Um, who, what, when, where, and uh, why? Nick, you want to do Reds in my LB first. That makes sense. Well, we don't have no Reds on my OB on Mondays, but I did make a slide, so I thought I'd All right. put it up. Sneaking it uh, in there on me. Sneaking it in there. What, what we got going on tomorrow, uh, Louisville play at uh, 6.05. Connor Phillips will be on the mound tomorrow. Uh, they're taking on Columbus. That's the uh, Guardians AAA, 6.35. Daytona's taking on Palm Beach. 7.15, Chattanooga taking on the Tennessee Lookouts. And then 7.35, Dayton at Cedar Rapids. But the Reds... Tomorrow, game two of four against the Milwaukee Brewers. Trace, how great would it be just to uh, uh, get the first two and oh, at least have a split no matter what right off the rip? That would be uh, pretty incredible. Frankie Montas can't be much better than a uh, .77 ERA through your first two starts. Um, he's only faced the Brewers once in his entire career. He gave up four runs and three and a third in 2022. Willie Adamas, three for five with a home run and a double off him. Uh, Reese Hoskins is two for two. Christian Yelich is over two. All right. Right-handed pitcher, Joe Ross. will be making his second start with the Brewers. He went three and two thirds without allowing a run to the twins in his Brewers debut, but he did walk five batters in that game. Um, that start was the first time Ross had pitched in the big league since August 10th, 2021. So back-to-back -back days, the Reds are facing starters that haven't really pitched a lot in the big leagues in a couple years. Um, he's only made seven minor league starts, too, uh, between 2022 and 2023. Had Tommy John surgery and then just several other just kind of brutal injuries. Uh, his velocity, unlike Ashby, did look good in his last start, despite the command issues. Um, career 2.35 ERA in four starts against the Reds, but he has never pitched at Great America Ballpark. Reds against Ross Candelario has a homer. India's one for one. Stevenson 0 for two. Martini has walked in his only plate appearance against Joe Ross. More like Joe Loss. What's up with all these? What's up with all these uh Brewers pitchers having just like the ability to kind of manipulate their name and it's just kind of like a cheesy joke. <laughs> I don't know. Something about it. I'm gonna keep it going though as best I can. I don't know how much longer I can keep keep up with the cheesy jokes. What do you got if they uh if they do Wade Miley on uh yeah. Wednesday, what do you got for him? Or are you gonna save it? Got to give me a minute, man. My brain doesn't work that fast. You know, Ross and Loss, pretty quick. Easy to easy to pull the trigger on that one, you know. Ashby, I don't know. That one takes a little bit of long. Not super long, but it takes a little bit of time. Uh, Miley, um, I don't know. 
I don't know. We'll find out. I'll have something. But uh, you know what time it is. You know what time it is. Uh, I got to get to some super chats here, and then uh, you have a, a pillow to get to. Uh, a couple super chats. One of, who else would it be? Michael Roth. One billion people in the chat. I ripped seven bushes out of my yard yesterday. The price they pay for winning a Christmas lights championships while the Reds ripped my heart out with a loss yesterday. Likes equals wins. Thank you. That's right. If you've not already, last promo that I will do before we end this show, please like the stream. Please like the stream. And one thing I wanted to add as well, many of you might not know this. You might have watched this show for two years now and not even known this. The podcast is a little bit different than the show. Uh, Nick puts a lot of time into this thing. If you have not already done it, please go download the podcast. Listen to the podcast in the morning. You know what? If you're if if you just want to be a nice guy and you don't, you're like, ah, I feel like I already heard the show. Just listen to like the first ten minutes of it, and then you can hear all of the the clips that uh, Nick pulls out from the press conferences and the things of that nature that keep it kind of a, a it's a little bit of a different flow, a different show. But uh, the podcast is great. Please go download it. Give us a, a rating and review, and uh, hopefully we keep climbing the charts in the old podcast game. So thank you for supporting us. We love you. And, um, you know, we're going to keep it going. Hopefully the Reds find a way to keep winning baseball games, and uh, we will keep on doing this show. And you know what else is going to happen? Nick's going to keep giving us. uh, And you know what? Here's the big reveal. I don't know if you know this, Nick, but I keep an eye on the chat. I keep an eye on the chat. I I see what they're talking about. Sometimes they think we're not very good at our job, so they just they talk about whatever. Not a big deal. Tonight, tonight, they don't know what your shirt says. But I can see it in the preview here, so they're getting ready to find out. Uh, you better get your final. You better get your final. Don't show it. You better get your final guesses in now. On baseball, isn't. You better get it in now. If anyone gets, I'm going to give you guys ten seconds. You better. You better spam the chat. If you get it right, if you get it right, I'll put you in a drawing for some tickets. I'll put you in. The, I'll put you in a drawing for some tickets. You got like five seconds. You better hurry up. Five, four, three, two, one. Nick, there it is. Shout out to, uh, I went on their podcast. They sent me a shirt. So, hey, shout out to those guys. They have a fun uh, fun little podcast if you're looking for uh, something national. So, there you go. All right, this, uh, this Nick Cage goes out to Ellie De La Cruz, who's hitting 297 with a 961 OPS. Man, what a bum. Send him to AAA. I mean, bum, bum, you bum. know, we expect better than that. 297. He only hit 297. Only got a 961 OPS. That's pathetic. We're better than that. Come on, Ellie. Get me off full screen. This is awkward. <laughs> you're ridiculous. Oh, you're ridiculous, man. I mean, you, 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 I'll tell you what, chat. We'll all collectively, we got to work hard together. You know what I'm saying? If Ellie ends up being a superstar, if Ellie, if Ellie ends up being an all-star, if Ellie ends up being an MVP of this league, we, we are going to be, I'll tell you what, Nick is going to have fist fights on his hands against somebody. I don't know who it's going to be, but we're going to have to protect our man at all costs because this guy is going to go on a parade of all parades. You thought the Finley Market Parade was good? Wait and see you see the parade that Nick goes on when Ellie De La Cruz finally breaks out of his shell. I'm just telling you, Finley Market ain't going to hold a candle to this thing. Just saying. All right. That time of the show where? What do we do? We dunk basketballs. And uh, I just want to tell you one last time, hit the outro. That I love you. We appreciate you. Go watch the second half of the National Championship game. Get you some sleep. We got more games coming tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, Chuck, he's back. Chuck is back. Oh. And Nick is hosting off the bench, baby. Sending him to the big time. Sending him to the big time. Nick, take it away. Now it's time to dunk on old Freddy Facebook. See how it goes.
Peace.